The Igneous Extruder is a thermal expansion machine that can combine water and lava to create stone, cobblestone or obsidian. To craft one you need a piston, two pieces of glass, a machine frame, two tin gears and a pneumatic servo. Once placed, right clicking on it will bring up its interface. Here you'll see two internal storage tanks. The one on the left is for lava and the one on the right is for water. They both have a capacity of 4000 millibuckets, which is the equivalent of four buckets. To bring lava and water into the igneous extruder, you need to use either thermal expansion fluid ducts or buildcraft fluid pipes. Or if you want, simply right clicking on it with a bucket of water or lava will do the same thing. On its interface, this button here will let you access the configuration screen. Here you'll be able to see all of the configurable faces. The front face has a rectangle on it, and it'll appear here in the middle. From there, the rest of the faces are positioned relative to that face. I'll change the colours to blue as I go, just so you can see. This one here is the top face. This one here is the left, this one is the right, this is the bottom one, and of course this is the face on the back. If a face is set to blue, it'll allow liquid to enter through that face. Now even though the tank on the left is where the lava is stored, it doesn't mean that the lava needs to come in through the left side. It can come in through pretty much any face, and it'll end up in the correct tank, and the same goes with the water. So as we can see here, we have the water coming in through the left side through a buildcraft fluid pipe, and on the right, I'm using a fluid duct to bring in the lava. Now the Igneous Extruder doesn't require any power to operate, and as soon as it has both lava and water, it'll start running. Up here you can choose which item you'd like to craft. All three will require that there be at least 1000 millibuckets of both lava and water before they can be crafted. This part is optional, there's also a redstone control panel here on the interface, where you can set the Igneous Extruder to respond to certain redstone inputs. It'll work as normal even if you don't change any of the settings in here. If you found this video helpful or informative, please give it a like. And if you want to see more tutorials like this one, you might want to consider subscribing. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments and have a great day.